The next structure which we are taking now is pharynx. Pharynx is actually not a structure, it is an area. And this area is funnel shaped area. Like if we have to uh, understand where this area is, in the neck region, the lower part, this part is funnel like. This is actually the pharynx part. Again, let us draw this diagram to understand which part has which opening and which structure so that we are able to understand the three parts of pharynx. This is the nasal chamber, palate, uvula. We have drawn this diagram many a times. On the lower side is the tongue and in the neck region, there are two tube-like structures or pipe-like structures. The anterior one and then there is a posterior one. And here is the backbone, that is the vertebral column. We are talking about these two tubes. Let us label these parts first. This is nasal chamber. This opening is internal nares that means it is the inner opening of the nasal chamber these are the outer one which we call the nostrils and this part which we have drawn here is tongue and here would be the lower jaw and this is going to be the upper jaw. Now, pharynx is divided into three parts. Let us write down these three parts first. Nasopharynx, oropharynx and laryngopharynx. Which part is now known as nasopharynx? The part where these internal nares open. Now let us first understand which part are we talking about. We are talking about this funnel-like opening, this type of structure that is our pharynx. The part of pharynx where the internal nares open. So nasopharynx is the part where internal nares open and these internal nares are two in number that means the two nostrils the air goes through the passage and it opens into the buccal cavity so these are uh, we can write two internal nares open here that means there is the opening of internal nares second thing which opens here is there is opening of eustachian canal or tube. This is the connection between the buccal cavity and the middle ear. So opening of eustachian canals or tubes. Again, one from each middle ear. So each side there would be one eustachian canal opening. So if we see from one side, there is opening of one internal nerve and one uh, eustachian canal. On the other side also, but if you're talking of the entire nasopharynx, like if this is the funnel-like area, this side would have one internal nerve and eustachian and this side also will have one internal ear and eustachian. Nasopharynx is lined with ciliated columnar pseudo stratified epithelium it is lined with ciliated columnar columnar pseudo stratified epithelium this is nasopharynx the second part is oropharynx. 
the opening that is mouth leads into this wide opening that is known as oropharynx so if we have to just mark the area this area is nasopharynx nasopharynx and the middle part that is the opening of this funnel that is this middle open or area is actually oropharynx so what exactly is there in oropharynx we can say the buccal cavity or the mouth leads into that area that is oropharynx so buck it has opening of buccal cavity we can say has or to be more precise let us say buccal cavity opens in oropharynx and it is lined with lined with non keratinized squamous stratified epithelium it is written as nkss that is non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium or squamous stratified epithelium so this part is oropharynx now the last is laryngopharynx these two tubes which we have drawn the anterior one is trachea that is windpipe and the posterior one is esophagus that is food pipe we know that a trachea its opening is known as glottis and there is a flap which covers it that is called epiglottis whereas the opening of esophagus is known as gullet passage of food and air they cross in the pharyngeal region what exactly are we talking about when we breathe in the air comes here this air from the internal nares travels and has to go into the windpipe that is trachea and the food that we eat comes through the mouth and it goes into esophagus through gullet so in this area there is crossing of the passage of food and air so laryngopharynx area would be the one which is near the tracheal opening that is near glottis because here is going to be larynx so this lower part here is known as laryngopharynx so this is near the opening of trachea that is near glottis or we can also say near larynx and it is also lined with non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium say so only the nasopharynx has ciliated epithelium whereas the other two areas that is oro and laryngopharynx they have non keratinized squamous and stratified epithelium now in this pharyngeal region there are tonsils also now let us see the uh, area or uh, arrangement of these tonsils if we take a section then we are going to see all these tonsils on the lower side are present the lingual tonsils these are lingual tonsils and as we are uh, drawing a section through this pharyngeal region we would see two openings here we are drawing it with the help of this tube and this is actually eustachian tube which we have drawn eustachian canal or tube so just above it there is again a pair of tonsils 
which are known as tubal tonsils. These are called tubal tonsils. On the lower side, again there is a pair and at the top there is a single tonsil. So let us now name them. This paired one, which is on the lower side, they are called palatine tonsils and the unpaired one which is at the top is known as pharyngeal tonsil. So there are six tonsils actually. Two are unpaired that is pharyngeal is unpaired and the lingual one is uh, unpaired. Whereas the palatine and the tubal tonsils these are paired ones and all these are in this area of lower buccal cavity or pharynx. The purpose of these and these tonsils are lymphoid tissues. So the purpose is defense because they would produce lymphocytes. And the reason why they are in such a large number in this area is because there is entry of food also and air. So they produce lymphocytes and can help in defense. Now, this complete arrangement of tonsils is known as Waldair's ring or it can also be termed as Waldair's lymphoid ring because this arrangement uh, represents all these lymphoid tissues or tonsils in a ring manner. That's why this name is given. And as we said, these are lymphoid tissues. They would produce lymphocytes and would help in destroying the pathogens which enter into our digestive system along with the food that we eat or the air that we breathe. Sometimes some people suffer from infection of these tonsils very frequently. So these tonsils can be removed, though there are many so in case if one or two are removed, that doesn't affect that much. With mild or slight precautions, without one or two tonsils, the person is able to lead a normal, comfortable life. So pharynx, three parts, nasopharynx, which has the opening of internal nerves and eustachian tubes, oropharynx, where the buccal cavity opens, laryngopharynx, it is near the laryngeal region, which has the opening of trachea. The opening is known as glottis. The tissue or the epithelium which is seen in the lining, ciliated columnar in case of uh, nasopharynx, non-keratinized squamous stratified in case of the other two areas. And these are the six tonsils and their arrangement which has been given the name as Waldair's ring. So this is about the pharyngeal part. Now in the next video we'll start with the tube structure that is esophagus.